don't love I me. Got too many strong women. I think it's this. <laughs> what 11 viewers hey folks how y'all doing welcome let's go to let's go to prayer i don't know what i'm doing they just threw the mic in my hands dear heavenly father we thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence father we just ask that uh that as we attempt to bring you an offering of praise and of worship That you would fill this house. That you would go through the airways and touch each household that's plugged in. That you would have your way in this place today. That we would bring you honor. We lift your son up that all men may be gathered unto him. Sweet Holy Spirit, we ask that you have your way in this house. There's no barriers that can stop you. So anyone that's needing healing, anyone that's needing healing in their body, anyone that's needing healing in their heart, anyone's needing healing in their spirit, I just ask that you would move today, Lord. Father, have your way. And all God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Y'all ready? ready? Let's go. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you 
Lord, come and fill this place. Lord, come and fill this place. And I will worship. And I will worship you. I worship you. I worship you always. And I will worship you. I worship you. I worship you always. And I will worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I will worship you, I worship you, I worship you always. Father, Father, we're on our knees with every heart. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us. Lord, come and fill this place. Soul is thirsting for the living eyes.
God, all that I am, and find my heart on the altar again. Set me on fire, set me on fire, take all, take all.
such a sweet spirit of the Lord that's just... So even if you're listening on the stream, if you'll just... Just lift your hands up and just begin to receive the Spirit of God just to touch you. I saw the Lord just begin to touch bodies and like I saw like stiffening joints just begin to be loosened and there was someone that had a toothache on their in the bottom right um, and that the Lord was touching that tooth. it's awkward when you're at home but if you'll just really just be still and just begin to lift your hands and the spirit of God wants to touch you we just thank you for your healing Lord we just come together around your throne right now Lord just to receive the touch of your heart upon our lives today just worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All the saints and angels.
so good, Lord. We just thank you for the sacrifice that you made on our behalf, Jesus. And we stand here today just covered in that beautiful blood of Jesus. It has restored us and rescued us. It has redeemed us. It has bought us back into your possession that we are now yours and you are ours. Father, we thank you for your blood. We thank you that the righteousness that you have given us in Christ Jesus, that blood covers our heart. It covers our families, Lord. We just thank you for your protection through this time, God. We thank you for the covenant that we have with you. Holy Spirit, we just pray right now for every household. We just ask that your spirit would fill every single home, that you would just touch every single one of our family members, God, that they would just be, just have a, 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 just a, a downpour of hope and faith and grace this morning, that whatever they need, Lord, that they know that you are the one who's provided for them. Father, we thank you that by your grace and that by your spirit, that we remain connected, one in the spirit, that there is no separation as we are in you, Father. We just thank you, Lord. Father, we just ask that during this time that you would give us uh, wisdom and that you would give us uh, the, the spirit of revelation and insight so that we would know the time, the season, the things that we are supposed to do as we move forward, Father. Father, you don't let any opportunity go to waste. And so, Father, in this time where there may be some chaos and confusion, we just speak your word of truth and your word of peace over, Father, every single household. We thank you that uh, there is none that are discontent, but we all find our contentment in you. We love you, Jesus. We love you so much. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Oh, my God, I love y'all so much. Oh, thank you so much. I've already had text messages from people saying how thankful they are for you. So if you've texted me, you can text them too. Amen? I know it was amazing. Pastor Ricky was on the floor crying, so it was a good, it was good time. Amen. All right. Are you going to turn the lights on, honey? lights. Okay. I, said, I can't see. <laughs> I probably have to sit so that way I sit still because you know I'm going to be moving. Um, um, yeah, I'm not going to be very long to be honest with you. So I'm good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, really. I'm not going to be long. <laughs> now I've, or I can hear the eye rolls in the spirit of people like, yeah, sure. She's not going to be long winded. I love (laughs) y'all. Oh, my goodness. If I can do this, let's see if I can. Big girls aren't made for stools, I'm just saying. Do what? No, 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 I'm good. I don't need any water. I really am not going to be that long, I promise. Promise, 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 promise. Oh, my goodness. All right. Do it. I know, really. What is it? 11, 20, 11.25? I'm not even going to gamble and say what time I'll be done. I'll just, I'll just be uh, real. Well, I want to, you know, I was kind of, I, I really didn't know I was going to be doing this today. I thought my husband was going to do it, but then things always change. You know how God is with us. Um, and uh, I heard, I had gotten an email last week from Cheats Ministry, um, and let me get the name of the podcast so I can, if y'all want to listen to it, I'm going to, I just want to share a couple of things that he um, uh, shared about the season that we are in an unprecedented time, because, oh, you know, I probably will try this again, is it, we'll, we'll try, we'll grab a battery just in case, um, we are in unprecedented times, uh, the last time we had Sunday school, I can't even remember how long it's been since we haven't been in church. Um, we had talked about, uh, like, if being alive on the planet right now is, like, the best thing ever because we are in some extremely significant prophetic time. Um, what's going on with our president, um, whether you like him or not, I really do not care. Um, God's using him during this time, and... Um, 
the things that have been happening between us and Israel, and there are, I can't get into the multiple uh, events that have happened, but there have been significant biblical prophecies fulfilled um, during this time. And I love you too, Bill. I miss you so much. Um, that it's an exciting time to be alive, really. Um, and when all of this really started to unfold, I have not had one iota of fear. I have not had one iota of doubt that God is completely in control of everything, that this was actually an appointed time in the timeline of God for, the, for heaven and earth. And you and I were created by God to be in it now. And so we should be rejoicing because Jesus knew that he was going to need us as kingdom portals in this season. Hallelujah. Um, so I just want to, I'm hoping today just to give you some encouragement so that you know that you're, we are, this is a wonderful time to be alive. It is awkward. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm a cave person. Y'all know I'm a cave person, but even I'm sick of my own cave right now. Um, so apparently I need, I need worship time with you guys more than I ever thought that I did. So I repent and I apologize now and I will express deeply how appreciative I am of every single one of my family members. Um, but, uh, I am ready for things to change and move back into, you know, w- the way we used to do things. But, um, until such time as we're allowed to do that, uh, we will continue to do this. So are you ready? Get a pen, get a pencil, get a paper, whatever you got to do. All right. So I don't know if you're aware, but Chuck Pierce had given some prophetic words back in August and September of last year um, about things that were going to be happening in 2020. As you, as we've already discussed here, we knew we were entering into a new era. Um, and uh, I actually went back and listened to the prophetic word I gave in November of 2019, the word, it was entitled Preparation for 2020. I listened to it this morning, and I kind of was dumbfounded. I didn't even realize what I was saying. And I was laughing because I said, I said, I don't know what it is, guys, but March is significant. I don't know what it, I, and I said it, I, had, I can't tell you what it is, but there's something extremely significant in March 2020. And listening to it today, knowing where we're at, I was like, First, I was like, whoa, and then second, I was like, Lord, I repent, because if I would have been wiser and a better steward of my gift, I probably would have had more insight. So needless to say, I was repenting this morning, and I'm going to make it a one purpose in life to steward the prophetic gift of my life so that I can hear better. Um, but uh, listen to that word. I know I am getting again, aren't I? Here, let me, I'll just use Ashley's. We love technology. Amen. Make sure I don't have any. <laughs> no effects. <laughs> but you'll probably have to turn me up just a hair because I have to hear myself. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So um, the podcast from Dutch Sheets, I told you I was going to tell you what it was. Um, uh, he j- this, is, this is the only episode. He just started this brand new podcast. Um, and it is under Dutch Sheets' name, and the podcast is called Conversation with Chuck Pierce, and it is dated um, Friday's date. Was it the 27th? Yes, so Friday's date. And I'm going to give you the synopsis that Dutch gave at at the end of what Chuck had actually been prophesying before and where we're at right now. So here are the the things that God is doing right now during this time. First is the economic the economic system of the world is being aligned right now. Um, Chuck Pierce had some insight about some significant prophetic events uh, in regards to China and how. Um, oh, we're going to switch it again. All right, all right. Sorry, y'all got it. Sorry, um, Richard, you're you're getting your pay. Amen. He's a volunteer. Amen. So uh, (laughs) now, oh, hello. Right now, um, the economic system of the world is being realigned right now. And there was some things happening within the nations. I'm not going to say that China did it on purpose. Um, But there were some strategic things that were going on. And if the nations were not going to fall on their faces and pray that there was actually going to be a shift in economic dominance and China was going to actually have economic world dominance by 2026. 
but they kind of overplayed their hand a little bit. And so what you're seeing right now, especially with President Trump and how he has cheated China, um, we are seeing actually this alignment, this economic system coming back into alignment where America is actually going to be the dominant um, economic power. And this was actually the restructuring, this is restructuring the economy of the world, um, and it has to do with Passover. Now, Passover actually begins April 8th, and it goes through April 16th, okay? Um, and, of course, the Word of God tells us in Exodus 14 that the Passover is the first of, of the months for the Jewish people. And he called it the Lord's Passover. Now, when the uh, people of Israel uh, were going through that time, they were in bondage uh, at, in, in Egypt. It was funny because the last time pastor was in service, he began to speak to, he began to call out women about their prophetic gift and also about their, in the spirit, they are to begin to pray to, because uh, during the Passover time, uh, the Lord told the women to go to Egypt and grab the spoils of Egypt. So women were going door to door saying, give me my gold, give me my silver. They, they actually, we saw a restructuring of the economic world during the Passover time. So pastor had given that word that he felt like he called out women specifically and said, it's time for us to get on our faces and begin to take things in the spirit world and bring it here. And that and when you read that in Exodus 14, that was actually the restructuring of the economic world. The wealth of Egypt was coming to, to Israel, and that's exactly what is happening right now. Now, if you remember, I discussed about, sorry, I have to get out of camera frame for a minute. I discussed how in 2020, the prophetic word over us about the breakthrough of blessing and prosperity. And it was not just going to be financial, but it had a lot to do financially. That, that's why, because it wasn't just for us, just us the point. It's for the church worldwide. So that this economic realignment is happening through all of this right here. It's funny how God put us forcefully into a rest. He put us into a Shabbat, whether we wanted to or not. He told the church, you're going to rest because the new era and the new glory that is coming that um, even uh, we, I prophesied about in December the new glory that was coming and the explosion of God's power and glory that's coming to the church um, this summer. Um, in order for us to handle that, he needed to forcefully put us into a time of rest. Amen. So how we respond right now as a nation is important, not because it releases God's judgment, but because it releases the, the degree of his redemption. So as the United States and the church in the United States falls on its face and begins to pray. We are going to see God heal our land. The church is going to become as beautiful as God has prophesied. Amen. Um, so we have to posture ourselves individually, and we have to posture ourselves as a church so that the redemption that God is calling for us to walk into, that as we draw near, we posture ourselves and open ourselves up for God to pour upon us the spirit of God that he wants to. Uh, in this time. So, um, so in addition, this Passover, this Passover actually becomes the greatest turning point in the history. That's a very powerful statement to make. This Passover becomes the greatest turning point in history for the next move of God. He said this is literally a launching point and a turning point for the new era. That's like, when even when I say it out loud, that's very weighty. Um, I just, I was listening even to myself speak in the message about how destiny is breaking forth over us now. And as I was hearing myself say that in November, I could hear my voice change, and I was listening to it today. I don't normally listen to myself. When I was listening to it today, I felt something so different on that word. It was like the prophetic drop of oil was all over that. Um, and we're going to talk about that scripture again in just a second. So that this is what God's trying to do in the church right now. It's a launching point. It's a turning point. Um, also, uh, what's my handwriting? Okay. Uh, after this, we're going to have, um, what is that word? Shifts after Passover. Okay. Oh, voices. Voices shift after Passover. So when we see this Passover, you're going to see um, the prayer movement that we've had as a nation. You're going to begin to see 
our voice begin to have a um, significant shift in the world as, uh, I don't know if you know this, but America lost some of its clout, some of its respect in the world, seeing that return right now through this, through this time and this Passover. Um, we're going to see America's true identity, <clears throat> excuse me, true identity for the next season uh, is coming forth right now through this Passover season. We're going to recapture what God created America for in the beginning. Oh, that's so exciting. And by August, we are going to have a new voice in America, our voice of the gospel. Hell is raging, is what he said. And I don't know about you, but you can feel it. He does not want our voices to rise up. He does not want redemption to, uh, on our country and on the church of God to be as significant as God has declared it's going to be. And so he is raging, and that is what this virus is about. And if I can give you just a little, if you look at the word panic and the word pandemic, the word is rooted in the Greek god Pan. He's the, he's the god who's half goat, half man. And do you know what he used for his weapons? He would scream. And when he would screech, it would release panic, fear, confusion, and distress. And the enemy would always lose that was coming against him just because of the panic. That's why you have the word panic. It's from that Greek god, Pan, half goat, half man. So when we're talking about what God is, what I've seen on Facebook people blaming God for this, and I cannot be any more righteously indignant when I say you are, you are a false prophet when you say that. God will use any opportunity to bring glory, but hell is raging, and this thing has come not just from a spirit of fear, but from the spirit of Pan, this this disgusting Greek god. And that's what panic is doing. And so the voice of the media has risen. And, it, and you have, there was an article in the New York Times last week that said coronavirus was brought on by evangelical nationalists. What is that? They just blamed the church for the coronavirus, literally. Literally. So if you don't think that's, that, that hell is not trying to come against the church in a very significant way right now, you're missing it big time. So the panic that's going out in our country is, is, a, is a spiritual warfare, and it's not because God is losing. It is because God is victorious, and he has already been victorious. And what we're going to come out of this looking like beauty, let me tell you, the beauty, the beauty of Jesus is going to be all over us. So I'm just telling you all that to let you know, hey, look, don't quit praying. Keep focused on, on Jesus. Keep focused on the blood of Jesus. Claim the blood of Jesus over you and your household. Just begin every day. That's our covenant. Praise God for the blood of Jesus. We had a scare in the Gatesville daycare. Um, one of our employees, her roommate, was very sick. And then she came to work one day. We, we sent her home, but she was being tested for the, the virus. And the, I, they got the text or the phone call. At first I was like, no, whatever. But then as I sat there for a second, what happened? Worry. That that spirit begins to overtake you. And so I, I, I texted Cheryl, I texted Nancy Brassfield, and I'm like, I need the two of you to agree with me right now. And I just began to say, and I said, and then I thought, wait a second, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that Gatesville daycare is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we have a ministry for the gospel of Jesus there. And there's no way that that thing can come through our doorpost. It's not happening because we have the blood of Jesus over us. And so once, you, you know, we began to declare that, the panic went away because Jesus is greater. He has, he has already disarmed and dismantled every single spiritual principality, all wickedness in high places. It's already been taken care of by Jesus. We just need to stand in our covenant. Amen? So keep praying. All right? Um, I talked about in November how this year was the year of grace, and it was the year of the transfer of wealth. And none of that has changed. This is just actually re reconfirmed at even greater right now. So um, as I was listening to the Preparation 2020 message, I said, the first thing I said was silence is deadly. And it still holds true today. If we say nothing, if we do not, if we don't declare the word of God over our lives, if we don't, 
if we don't pray, if we don't speak God's truth over us, we are going to find ourselves in, just sucked into that vacuum of fear and even anger. I found myself getting really angry the other day, just being short-tempered, and that's not okay. Look, there's a lot of things that come at us in this time, so it's extremely important that we don't stay silent. We've got to declare the word of God. We've got to pray. Amen? I'm just giving you, you know, some practical things right now. Oh, look at that. I dripped. I got a tissue. So, back in November, as I was telling us to get ready, I said there were four things we had to do. First, listen and obey. Okay? I said that our thirst and our hunger was vitally important in this season. And the first thing we had to do was listen and obey. And they go together. It's not just listen or just obey. <laughs> you have to listen and obey. The second thing I said that we, was crucial for us to do before we entered into 2020 was that we had to receive God's word daily. Um, that we had to uh, realize that the promises of God really are hanging over our head. I mean, it, we are in such a promise-filled point right now. And they're, they're right here. They're, they're right above us or they're right here in front of us. And in order for us to grab a hold of it and enter into it, we've got to listen to and obey that we've got to get into the word every single day. We need the manna of heaven every single day. When we are hungry or when we are thirsty, we can find ourselves in compromise. So spiritually speaking, we have to make sure we're filling the hunger void in us. We have to fill the thirst that we have instead of, instead of taking it. It's, it's so hard, especially when you're home right now, to do everything else. But I understand. I'm telling you. It's been, and I'm home every day. I mean, I already worked from home, but now I really have to be home. And it, it's so hard. Look, okay, I got a boo-boo on my elbow. I got a boo-boo, a bad boo-boo on this elbow. Do you know what this is? This is from doing puzzles. <laughs> I have puzzle wounds on my elbows. I'm like, what? I'm just saying, everything's dangerous, okay? Everything is dangerous. <laughs> Even puzzles are dangerous. I thought maybe me and Ricky doing puzzles would be dangerous because I'd probably punch him, whatever. But no, it's just me leaning on the, t on the table with my elbows. Ridiculous. Anyway, so yeah. I'm filling my time with whatever I can. Um, but at the same time, if we don't spend specific time in the Word of God and in prayer, we're going to find ourselves filling it with other things that are going to end up causing us to be very anemic in the spirit. And if there's any time that we should be really vitally connected to Jesus, it's right now because he is talking to us. He's, he's revealing himself to us. He's preparing us and asking us to steward what he's given us because the world is looking to the church, and we need to make sure we're prepared. The third thing I said that we had to do was to arise and go forward. We cannot expect a move and stay where we're at. So spiritually speaking, we got to move. we got to get up and run after what God has given to us right now. Because um, harvest is here, beloved. And we're going to read that scripture right now. In John chapter 4. I'm going to read in the Passion Translation. John chapter 4, verse 35, it says, As the crowds emerged from the village, Jesus said to his disciples, Why would you say the harvest is another four months away? Look at all the people coming. Now is harvest time, for their hearts are like vast fields of ripened grain, ready for a spiritual harvest, and everyone who reaps these souls for eternal life will receive a reward. And those who plant spiritual seeds and those who reap the harvest will celebrate together with great joy. Ooh, this is where we're at. And do you realize that at this moment, the disciples probably thought Jesus was crazy because, I mean, he was moving and things were happening on the earth. But fast forward three years, what do you have happen? You have the book of Acts. You have Pentecost come. So when Jesus was saying that the, that the, that it was the, the harvest was ripe. It was right there that it is time 
they were like, what are you talking about? But Jesus was what? Seeing in three years ahead of them, there was going to be the greatest outpouring that the church had ever seen. Or the church really wasn't the church yet. The church was just now becoming the church as Jesus began his ministry. And so in three years from this prophecy that he said the, the fields were white with harvest, we have, we have Pentecost and we have Peter preaching the first message and we having 3,000 men, not counting women and children, being born again in a day. And then the church goes from addition to multiplication. So Jesus was right when he said the field was, was ripe with harvest. And guess what? In this podcast with Chuck, Chuck Pierce, he said, this is the greatest harvest right now we are ever going to see. And I'm like, it, there's, not, there's no churches gathering. So it would look like, what are you talking about? There's a harvest. There's a harvest. Amen. It, it may be just us right now. We're on a camera, but guess what? It is harvest time. And we are about to see the greatest outpouring of the Spirit of God since Pentecost. I am, I got goosebumps. I'm so excited about it. Lord have mercy. <laughs> okay, so we were prophesied as a church that January, February, and March, we would see trickles of the Spirit of, the spirit of God begin to, we knew his, his increase was coming. Then we were prophesied in April, we were going to have a downpour. And then by May, we were going to have an explosion of glory and visitation. And that we were going to become a refuge for the downhearted, the discontent, and those who are broken. Oh, Jesus. I'm like, can you imagine those who don't know Jesus? By the end of April, if, you know, depending on how long this goes on, we went from record unemployment to in one week, 3.3 million people unemployed. That's way beyond exponential growth. Now, I believe wholeheartedly that, the, like I said, that economic alignment is happening, and you're going to see an absolute, the economy go exactly where it was, but there's still going to be people in our midst who are broken. They've lost their jobs. They've lost their businesses. A lot of things are going to be happening, and it's the church who's going to be the ones to pick up the pieces and put them in that place where they are whole once again, both spiritually, physically, economically, and in every way. And we have to prepare ourselves as a body as a church for that time because God wants to use you, you, for the glory that he wants to release over the people that are around you. It's not you got to bring them to church. It's you are the portal of heaven. You are the one who has the, you have the connection between heaven and earth so glory can go through you to the people that are around you. Amen? Oh, y'all got to be happier than that. <laughs> He wants us to prepare for unseen things. I said that back in November. In November, I said, we have to be in a place where our beloved identity and our communion with God is the most vital thing to us so that he can begin to prepare us for things that we have not seen and things that we have not heard. And I just was confronted with, have I really stewarded what I was supposed to have stewarded? And I can do more. If I'm honest, I can do more. And I'm hoping that maybe today you'll stir yourselves also and say, guess what? I could do more to steward what God's trying to do through me and in me right now in this season. Because he wants all of us to be prepared for unseen, unheard things. We, by, by coming into communion with Jesus, we begin to adapt ourselves to obey the uncomfortable. Is that, my, is that the right word? This is what I, I was sensing in my heart, that because God wants to display his power and his love and his glory through, through all of us, that as we spend time with him, what we're doing is it's making it easier for us to do what's uncomfortable to our flesh. So when he asks us to prophesy or when he asks us to, to give to somebody or approach somebody in the store, not close, keep your distance, but when he asks us to approach someone, <laughs> they have a little X now at Walmart so you don't get close enough to people. It's kind of funny. I didn't realize that that's what they were for until I was too close to somebody. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but he wants us to get to the place where when he asks us to do the uncomfortable, we're so close to him that doesn't mean the uncomfortable goes away, but we're so connected to him, we're like, 
okay. Because you know him so well, even though it's uncomfortable, I'm willing to risk it. I'm willing to step out. Look, if we don't go forward, if we don't move, that's like us on one side of the Red Sea. You got the enemy behind you. Guess what? If you don't take a step onto the water, you're going to be overcome. Your option is I'm going to be overcome in the water. Or I'm going to be overcome by the enemy. Well, Jesus, mighty God, I'd rather be un- overcome by water than I am by the enemy, right? What's well, water? Water is the word of God. So you might as well step out, you know what I mean, and get yourself out there and let God let you cross over. And the closer you are to Jesus in communion with him every single day, the easier it is, not saying it's not going to be uncomfortable, but the easier it is for us to step out and say, okay, I can do this. Even though I don't understand it or I may feel embarrassed by it, I can do it because he's, he's been faithful to me in the secret place. Amen? Let's run over to Song of Solomon real fast. Chapter 2. Oh, how I love this book. The last time we were in Gatesville, I got so tickled because we walked in. I'm like, yep, it's session 20 tonight. I said, I want to get like, I want to get a meme and I wanted skeletons in the chair and it wanted to take a picture and said, still on Song of Solomon. (laughs) Still in Bible study with a net on Song of Solomon. Like, yeah, a bunch of skeletons in the pews, but that's all right. It's all good. Um, All right, so we're going to go to verse 10. He says, Arise, my dearest, hurry, my darling, come away with me. I have come as you have asked to draw you to my heart and lead you out. For now is the time, my beautiful one. The season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended, and the season of hiding is over and gone. Oh, we are so here. The rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers. The season for singing and pruning the vines has arrived. I hear the cooing of doves in our land, filling the air with songs to awaken you and guide you forth. Can you not discern this new day of destiny that's breaking forth around you? The early signs of my purposes and plans are bursting forth. The budding vines of new life and new bloom are, are now blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flowers whispers, there's change in the air. Arise, my love my beautiful companion, and run with me to the higher place. For now is the time to arise and come away with me. For you are my dove, hidden in the split open rock. Oh, isn't that just beautiful? It was I who took you and hid you up high in the secret stairway of the sky. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship and lovely your voice in prayer. Oh. This is it, beloved. Destiny right now. The changing of the season has arrived. What's fascinating about this this particular portion in the psalm, in the song, is she's still in a place of comfort. She's still behind the wall. He has asked her, come with me to the mountains. I want to show you a new high place with me. But she was comfortable where she was. She was satisfied. There was she wasn't in sin. Everything There really was no reason for her to get up and go, except that he wanted her to come higher. And what's crazy is she gets up, and she doesn't run to the mountains. She runs just into the city. She's not fully obedient, but at least she's moving. That's why we put at least least arise, at least get up, at least start to pray, at least open your Bible, at least do something. You can't have change if you never go forward. So do something. So she gets up, and she doesn't run to the mountains. She just runs to the city. And then she, you know, he, he encounters her again on the way to encourage her, saying, I love you. Destiny's all around you. You're so perfect. And she's not fully obedient still. And then she has this test hit her life. But before the test, before all this happens, Jesus prophesies over her how beautiful she is, how, what a conqueror she is. She's as terrible as an army with banners. She's so victorious. She's not anywhere close to where she's supposed to be. She's nowhere near the mountaintop. And then this test comes to her. And at the end of the test, he begins to declare over her again how terrible she is, how victorious she is, how beautiful she is. But you know what? This time, she is. She's actually become the very things he prophesied about right after this moment. 
difference between a prophetic word he spoke over her that she hadn't walked in yet and her walking in the fullness of the prophetic word was the test that she endured. He knew the test was going to bring out the very things in her that he saw when she didn't see anything but complete. She, all she was like, I've just got all these little foxes in my life. I have all these little areas of compromise in my life. But he spoke over her who he saw her to be in that moment. And she went through a test. And on the other side of the test, she came forth as beautiful and terrible and victorious as he said she was when she was completely failing him. And let me tell you what, if I have ever seen anything in the physical happen, as I see right there in that song, is what we're doing right now. We are in the midst of a test. And God released so many prophetic words over us as individuals and as this corporate body and the church worldwide. So much was prophesied over the church between August of last year and December of last year. And we all were excited. I was excited. We come into 2020. Who expected a virus that was going to keep all of us in isolation, tank our economy? Nobody expected it. And if we were short-sighted and we were not spiritual people, we would say, we've gone to hell in a handbasket. And apparently God's not on the job. And everything that he prophesied over us from in 2019 for 2020 was a big fat lie. But that's if you're short-sighted and unspiritual. But if you have vision and you are in Christ Jesus, all you want to say in this time is hallelujah. How great will the glory be? Because why else would we be enduring this kind of crazy crap that we got going on right now? This is the kind of stuff that happens when we begin to dance and have fun because we know it sucks right now. But guess what? There is something so beautiful on the other side of this that it's as terrible as an army with banners. Hell is raging. Because what Jesus has prophesied over her church is right. Its destiny is over you right now. It's bursting forth over you. And if you hear, you can hear the Spirit singing a song. That's what it says in the song. Do you hear the cooing of the doves? Do you hear the sound of the Spirit of God awakening is what it said? There is an, there is an awakening right now. Right now. We have been praying for awakening since we opened the doors to this ministry in 2002. And for the first time, I was like, we are in it. What we have been praying and believing for is right here. This is the new era. This is the new glory. This is the promise that God has given to his church. And I will not be on the sidelines when God is moving in a new way. I purpose in my heart to participate with him fully with what he's doing in the earth right now. And I promised to, to the Lord that I was going to steward my gift in a much better way so that I could hear what it is I need to hear, so I can declare what it is that I need to declare to prepare the church, both individually and for us collectively. Amen? Ooh, I tell you what, I'm excited. My, my little prophetic senses are like having a blast right now. Amen? Oh, my gosh. God is so good. So, we're going to pray real fast one more time. Amen? Then we're going to call it a day. Look, it is only two minutes to 12. That was 35 minutes. Not even quite 35 minutes. It will be when I'm done praying. I am amazing and awesome. Just saying. All right. Nobody else needs to tell me. I can tell myself. Do what? Oh, yes. I will do that again. Yes. I will. I do want to say thank you, though, because we have such faithful givers, really, it is. I did have, like, some momentary panic moments um, when we were, we, we employ, we employ over 50 people. That's a lot of households to be responsible for. Um, that's why uh, people in, in places of power that have never, ever owned a business and never been responsible for paying somebody, I, I would, I, I have to, um, rebuke the spirit of murder and choking because I would like to physically assault them. Um, but anyways, the burden of that um, is so weighty. Uh, I was just like, we can't close. We can't close. We can't close. You know, I'm like, I'm like, Jesus, we can't close. I'm like, I was having a moment, but I, you know, guarded myself up in truth. Got to tighten that belt up. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, so the daycares have been fine. You know, we have seen some fluctuations in attendance and stuff, but other than that, I mean, we, we're, we're doing good. 
Um, but then I was like, oh, gosh, what are we going to do as a church? But we have such amazing, faithful people. Just everyone is still giving. Um, and it's just it's just really humbling, honestly. Um, so I do appreciate you still giving. We still need you to give. Don't stop giving. Um, <laughs> because, you know, we need, we'll need it. Um, and uh, I guess the text to give is 254-213-7066, I believe. And, of course, you can give online. I think I, I did. If you did not get an email, I sent out an email this morning. So if you did not receive the email, you need to let me know because that means you're not on my, you're not on my, um, my email list. And so make sure you reach out to me with your email so that I can add you to it. Um, and um, at this point, um, I'm not sure what Bill County is going to say about us gathering. Our, right now, if we can't gather next week, we'll probably do this again. Um, and I'm thinking maybe we'll do something on a Wednesday night. Um, so, uh, I really feel like we need to stay connected. So I will let everybody know Tuesday or tomorrow about, as I talk to these folks about Wednesday. So, um, if you need anything, um, Pastor James has been checking on the senior citizens our spicy seniors. Um, and he has been trying to, uh, get things that they need. I've been, uh, of course my mom, I've been taking care of her, but if, if you're not a senior and you need something, of course, all you have to do is reach out to us. We will do everything we can to help. Um, so just let us know. I know that there. I know that utility companies aren't turning things off and stuff like that. But if you are financially strapped and you need some help, you need to let me know. Um, uh, we'll do what we can. And I guess that is it. Why don't y'all stand and we're gonna pray for everybody out there. We're gonna have y'all. I'm gonna have y'all your hands that way. I need. I need to call my husband. He's been so sick with his potassium. I only keep him in prayer. He's been, we're having a hard time getting his potassium back up to the right level. Um, and he's getting, he's getting sick. So, all right, let's just lift our hands to our families. So, Father, we just speak over every household, just blessings and uh, just your presence. We just pray health and healing over every single household. Lord, we just ask that your spirit of revelation and insight would just, uh, just, just come upon every single member, Lord God, that they would open the word of God, they would see um, what you want to say to them. We just speak hope over every household, Father. We just say that there is destiny breaking forth over every single heart. Father, I thank you that we are being fully equipped uh, to be your servants and your bride in this time. And Lord, I just pray that you would empower every single heart to be filled with your spirit, that they would be a, a, a portal uh, into the kingdom realm of God, to everyone that they see, that they, they speak to, Father God, that they would be a voice of hope and healing and of peace, that they would, they would speak truth over every situation, and that they would be just a light right now in this darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we love you guys. Thanks for bearing with us for the first one. We'll see you probably Wednesday. Bye.